We're at a point in the year where there's nothing new on the GPU front. Now, when you're a graphics card manufacturer, like XFX, you're at the mercy of AMD, much like Nvidia partners are reliant on the green team to release something new, so they can release something new themselves and in turn, I guess, get people excited about more performance or lower prices, or I hope that we get a mixture of the two. So what actually happens in the down season of a GPU cycle? Well, typically, not a great deal. We may see promotions going on with retailers or AMD may offer up some gaming bundles if you buy a new GPU, but that's about it, or so I thought. Recently, XFX contacted me and started discussions about a new set of limited edition GPUs, which is what we have here with the 7800 XT and 7900 XTX magnetic air cards. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. So let me start by saying we're not going to be focusing on gaming performance too much because underneath these are still 7800 XT and 7900 XTX models. They still feature the same core counts and the same amount of memory that you'd expect from a 7800 XT or 7900 XTX. Now there are some differences with the clock speeds and that comes down to the individual models because XFX don't just release one SKU of each model but instead have the likes of a reference card or one with a better cooler and then not forgetting their black edition cards which are even faster. Now let's talk about the models that we have here because we have a 7800 XT and a 7900 XTX here today and they are available in black or white for the 7800 XT, white for the 7900 GRI which we don't actually have here and then black only for the 7900 XTX. And while it would have been nice to see a white model, we instead have the black models here today to look at. Now the 7800 XT comes in with a game clock of 2124 MHz and a boost clock of 2430 MHz and comes with a TGP of 212 watts. While the 7900 XTX comes in with a game clock of 2455 MHz and a boost clock of 2615 and then a TGP of 327 watts. Meaning that the 7800 XT matches the specs of the Core Edition, while the 7900 XTX comes in identically to the Black Edition. Now, though we don't have one here, in terms of the GRI, that will come in with a game clock of 2052 MHz, a boost clock of 2395 MHz, and a TGP of 244 watts. Now, specs aside, these GPUs have a massive trick up their sleeve, and the clue is in the name, Magnetic Air. What we essentially have is a toolless set of fans with no screws, which could easily allow you to quickly swap over the fans. Now what this means is that cleaning or even replacing the fans is a breeze. Simply remove the fan or fans, give them a dust off and slap them back in. And it's amazing how quickly they connect and start spinning up again. Now each fan has a strong magnet that means that placement allows the fan to simply drop into place very, very easily. And with the four pins and contact plate that spans the whole structure, you can almost throw the fan in and off it goes. Now after speaking to XFX, they have advised from a health and safety standpoint to turn the system off. But I've got to admit, it does look pretty cool slapping the fans in while it's going and seeing how quickly it actually picks up the contact and starts operating. But XFX nor eTechnics will accept any responsibilities for damaged fingertips and you may also break a fan blade, so be careful of that. Also, it's unclear at this time as to if you'll be able to buy the 11 bladed fan separately or if it's more for pure warranty purposes if one dies in action and you need to simply replace it. But in theory, at least from a cost perspective, this is a bit of a game changer as you can just replace the individual broken fan without the need for sending your card off for repair. And I honestly think this could be the future. Though XFX do have a patent on their design, so I wouldn't expect to see anything remotely similar from other brands anytime soon. What's also cool is thinking about the possibilities of customized colored fans to make the GPU unique in your own way. And I know that this is something that XFX are actually potentially looking at in the future. 
Now in terms of the fans, the 7800 XT and the 7900 Gree feature two 100mm fans and a single 90mm fan, while the 7900 XTX features three 100mm fans, all with 11 blades and double ball bearing design. Now speaking of the design, I won't lie, the cards are big, taking up three and a half slots inside your case, and they feature a pretty typical black and red design on both the shroud and the fans, while the white is much simpler with an all white design across the shroud and the fans. And yeah, I'm still kind of kicking myself that we don't actually have a white one here. Branding wise, it's quite simple and not too in your face. Even the fans just have a simple X off to one side of the middle of the fan, along with a nicely lit XFX logo on the top of the shroud and a stealth Radeon logo stemming from the back plate, which wraps around. And this is the area that you're more likely to see if you're mounting the cards in their typical horizontal orientation anyway. So I'm quite glad that it looks very, very clean. Now, in terms of the back plate, the 7900 XTX is typical XFX with an industrious ridge design that covers the complete PCB with some small ventilation slits and a larger cutout towards the end of the card for exhausting air. And this gives our kind of first glimpse of the large heatsink. The 7800 XT is slightly different in design, but being a lower end card won't require as much surface area, though it does still take up the full length of the card and actually has a lot more ventilation, but does follow the same design philosophies as its bigger brother. In terms of size, the 7800 XT comes in at 337mm by 132mm by 59mm and weighs in at 1440 grams. while the 7900 XTX comes in at 346mm by 132mm by 68mm, so a little bit larger, and weighs in at 2145 grams. Now for power delivery, the 7800 XT gets its power from two 8-pin power connectors, while the beefier 7900 XTX is powered by three 8-pin power connectors. So nothing really too out of the ordinary, but enough power to allow the cards to hit their rated boost speeds. Now when it comes to cooling, XFX don't mess around, and that's pretty clear to see from the large heatsink which spans the full length of the PCB and then some, as they actually extend beyond the length of the PCB, which in theory should aid in cooling. Speaking of cooling, the 7800 XT features a nickel plated copper surface, so nothing too out of the ordinary, whereas the 7900 XTX features a nickel plated copper vapour chamber design which makes direct contact with both the GPU core and the memory modules. For the VRM circuitry, XFX have strategically placed various thermal pads to make the best contact with the phases for the very best cooling performance on both of these models of cards. Then on top of this, XFX have also switched the thermal paste that they use to Honeywell PTM7950, which according to their own R&D is more efficient and longer lasting. So you kind of get a real sense that XFX really want to push the longevity of their cards from the thermal paste right down to the magnetic air design for the fans. So with the rundown on the cards done, let's see how they perform. Starting with game performance and looking at Alan Wake 2 on the 7800 XT, and it's here where the magnetic air isn't off to the best start, being beaten by both the Sapphire Nitro Plus and Merc 319 Black Edition cards, albeit only by between 3 and 4%. So it could be argued margin of error or just bad binning in terms of the GPU core. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, and it's much of the same again, with both the Sapphire Nitro Plus and XFX Black Edition both coming in with just under 4% more performance overall when compared to the Magnetic Air. I'm sure that overclocking the card could make up the gains, but then the same could be argued for the other cards, which would just move the gap between them to a slightly higher frame rate. Then lastly, as we look at Starfield, the gap does draw closer with just a single percent between them. Though again, the magnetic air model is the lesser performing and retesting garnered the same results. So maybe we just don't have the best sample, but it could more than make up for things in the cooling department, which we'll find out a little bit later on. Switching over to the 7900 XTX and cranking the resolution up to 4K, and we find in Alan Wake 2 that the performance is a little better from the magnetic air card this time round. It matches that of the XFX Merc 310 Black Edition and comes in just under 2% faster than the AMD reference card, though this only equates to 1 FPS in the averages and the same in the 1% lows. Cyberpunk shows very similar results with the Magnetic Air matching the other XFX card in both the averages and the 1% lows, and this time giving us 5% more performance over the AMD reference card. Though as the performance is sub 60 FPS, this does sound somewhat inflated and instead equates to just 3 frames per second. 
Then lastly, as we move over to Starfield, there's a bit more of a difference, with XFX Black Edition packing 1% more performance, though that's neither here nor there. While the Magnetic Air manages 3% more performance when compared to AMD's reference card, though this is somewhat expected considering the specs in comparison. Now when it comes to cooling performance, starting with the 7800 XT and things were kept pretty under control, with a peak GPU temperature of 58 degrees, while the hotspot did climb quite a bit higher with a peak of 79 degrees, all while the memory junction peaked at 76 degrees. Now for the most part, the clock speed sat around 2510 MHz, though on occasion it did peak higher around 2536 MHz, all while using just short of 250 watts as a total board power. Now in terms of the fans, which is arguably what these cards are all about, they did sit pretty comfortably between 1100 and 1400 RPM, which meant that the card was no louder than the rest of our system, though it's quite interesting that the fans change speed by around 300 RPM to keep the temperatures under control. We'd normally see a GPU at a more constant speed, though if this means a quieter operation, then I'm all for it. With the 7900 XTX, the GPU peaked at 62 degrees and with a hotspot of between 78 to 79 degrees, though we did record a peak of 80 degrees for a brief moment of time. The memory junction was consistent throughout the test at 84 degrees, all while recording a total board power of 389 watts. The clock speed was a bit more erratic on this card, floating between 2595 and 2615 MHz for the most part, though it did peak higher at around 2627 MHz, all with a slightly louder operation, with a fan speed of between 1480 and 1610 RPM, which is on the higher end of the scale, so you may hear it over the rest of your system, but again, the fan speed fluctuates quite a lot, so nothing really of concern. So there we have it, a new set of new GPUs, well, new graphics cards that utilize the same GPUs that we've had now for quite some time, though I'm not even mad about that. It's a pretty dire time for gaming right now and having something to actually talk about, well, is a bit of a breath of fresh air, especially as it's not just a tweaked model or a refresh of a cooler that we've seen time and time again. I actually like the idea. It's novel and could save, I guess, quite some time and maybe even money if your GPU ever has a fault. Though of course, that's limited to the fans, though in experience, if a GPU does die, it's normally one of two things. The first being that it's full on dead and the other being fan related. So again, this could save some time, money and hassle. And I don't know, could be the future of cooling, at least for XFX. Now in terms of performance, well, it is lacking somewhat, which is a shame, as otherwise I think I'd be singing the praises of these cards a lot, lot more. But this maybe, I don't know, could just be limited to my samples. The performance is just a little under what I'd expect. Though still for the most part, it did fall within margin of error and the 7900 XTX did line up a lot better than the 7800 XT did in comparison to similar cards that use the same GPU. Now, when it comes to pricing, we've been told that the 7800 XT Magnetic Air will be launching for $529, which in comparison to the QICK319 model is $10 more expensive, which personally, I'm fine with considering the potential added value of the hot swappable fans, while the 7900 XTX Magnetic Air will be launching for $979, which is a 6% markup over the standard model. And in my opinion, well, it's just a bit too much to ask. Though a lot of this could come down to the retailer and what they decide to stock it at, so hopefully it may actually come in cheaper. Because while the idea is good, $60 more for essentially the same card is quite a tough pill to swallow. Overall, as I mentioned, it's nice to see new ideas come into market that actually inflict real change and have a benefit to the feature, opposed to just more of the same stuff, which at this point in a GPU cycle is just getting boring and tiresome. And I hope more brands actually jump on this bandwagon of kind of having that mentality and starting to offer up more to the consumer, but hopefully without too much of a price increase. Because while the 7800 XT makes sense from a standpoint of what you get versus what you pay, the 7900 XTX in my opinion, just isn't worth the extra cost. And that's a shame because I honestly think that XFX have something here, but sadly, it's just not priced in a way that will make me tell you to actually go out and buy it. So what do you think? Is the idea good? Is the execution good? Is the price bad? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this content and not necessarily the cards or the prices, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you love what we do, remember you can help support us over on Patreon where you get a ton of cool benefits like exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, access to a super special area over on our Discord and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye-bye.